Hi, this is Bob, N9KR in southern Indiana. Today I thought we'd take a look at a, uh, a project that we've just started. It's a Morse CW decoder uh, built around an Arduino microprocessor and some great open source code that's been written by uh, Bud Churchward, WB7FHC. Uh, it's really some great software and it looks like it's going to do a real nice job for us. Bud has a, web a website with uh, a number of videos that show his version of of this uh, project and so we uh, we got on the bench here a number of pieces it's all just a real rough prototype we're just kind of testing out the basic concept so far I'm very encouraged uh, we've got uh, basically right now we're using a Mega 256 in the back here up on its side that's our microprocessor we probably will switch to a lot smaller uh, nano or even a homebrew little guy based on the uh, based on the Atmel chip just kind of dead bug style we've built a few of them in the past <coughs> and they seem to work pretty well and they're cheap and easy to do now we have a 20 by 4 inch display here we just got these just a couple of days ago from ebay uh... five dollars and fifty cents i got each i got two of them delivered to the door here pretty good price um, and you really need the four, the four, the four lines of uh, display to, to make this real effective and uh, bud did a great job on the software it has uh... has word wrap and scrolling and it just works great uh, the other pieces to this uh... And we want to be able to just uh, package this in a relatively small uh, box and then just have it have the ability to just hold it up or hold up a small microphone by a, by a transceiver speaker and uh, to do that you need a front end uh, there's a lot of them out there on the web built around the LM567 it's a tone decoder gives you the flexibility to kind of uh, be selective and pick out one tone that you can you can tune to your sweet spot on, on your CW listening uh, six seven hundred hertz and it's a has a filtering effect so the other signals that are nearby don't typically interfere and uh, so far it works pretty good we're pretty pleased with it just this again this rough version so uh, we also wanted the ability in the shack here to to be able to just monitor our keying uh, through our electronic key or our straight key on the same display and so uh, we've got that incorporated here on this test setup as well got a key around the back here and Got a straight key here, and off to the right, you can't see it as a there's an electronic uh, key or paddle. So that's the plan. We'll fire this up in just a second. We'll move the camera in closer, and we'll see uh, show you what we got with this setup. Okay, so here we go. We moved in closer. We got this uh, little uh, Morse code program running on the laptop just to generate the audio for us. It's set right now at 25 words per minute with a pitch of 670 hertz. So let's fire it up and see how well we copy here. We have a microphone connected set at the front of the, right in front of the speaker on the PC. See that word wrap working and the little LED on the proto board down there flashing in concert with the CW. That's also used for tuning when you're trying to tune in a signal live from the receiver. Looks like we're just about solid copy. Those are random, just random words generated by the CW test program. So we'll go ahead and stop the computer from generating that test CW. Let's take a, we'll just fire up the, uh, haven't changed any of the settings here, but we'll just jump on the paddle on the keyer over here and see if we can continue to send something. Another thing about this code is it's that Bud wrote, it's kind of self-learning. Once you send the first few words, particularly if they're heavy with DAS, lots of letters with DAS versus DITS, uh, the code learns very well to basically adapt itself to the speed that you're sending at. I'm going to go ahead and send with the paddle and the electronic keyer. It'll be a little slower, but I think we'll still be in good shape here. go. CQ, CQ from N9KR. Just perfect. Uh, it did perfect copy. <clears throat> and uh, so we're real pleased with the way this is working. I think we get this packaged on down into a small small package. Probably we'll do it Manhattan style where it'll be uh, hardwired. It'll be wired to 
uh, manually uh, with dead, dead bug style on the microprocessor and probably on the uh, on the decoder chip and uh, everything else just on a kind of a small piece of copper mounted inside a small uh, chassis that we have available and then the uh, display mounted out on the front probably have a push button on there for a reset so we can clear the screen uh, just like if I hit the reset on the uh, AT Mega right now clear the screen back to the starting point reboots the program basically and uh, we're going to use probably this Nano. I've got a Nano here you can see on the screen a little uh, Arduino Nano we got a little uh, rubber insulating piece on the top that we're going to physically use to position it correctly inside the chassis but you can see how much smaller this will be then uh, than the AT Mega in our finished product so thank you for watching we'll uh, probably uh, update this when we get a completed product and uh, we'll see how it looks and how it works in the real world